Hello there, my name is James Gibson and welcome to my fourth tutorial on Visual Basic and how to create a basic calculator. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at how to make the operations buttons of our calculator. So that's the ones that do uh, multiply, uh, divide, add, and subtract. Uh, so I'm just going to open up my project here. All right. So uh, just going to go through a quick review of what we did last time. So the last time, uh, on my last tutorial, what we did is we went through and we figured out how to do all of these buttons right here. Uh, and by basically we had three different buttons that we actually focused on, uh, which first off we've got button number one. So this is a standard number button. Uh, so what it does is it adds, it takes whatever the contents of our text box happen to be, uh, adds a one to the right side of, uh, that, of that number, and then stores the contents all back into the text box once more so that it's ready for the next number button to get pressed. We had two special cases that we took care of, which were the um, uh, the, uh, the decimal button, which uh, puts a decimal on the right-hand side of our, of our text box, just like uh, our normal number buttons, but then also disables itself after it's used in order to prevent people from putting in multiple decimals. So we can't go like five uh, decimal decimal two, five, six. Then we also have the negative button, uh, which we can see right here, which is very, very similar, um, but, it's, uh, but it's a bit of a special case as well, in that we want the negative to appear on the left-hand side of our number. Uh, so we actually have the number sign here, sorry, the, the negative sign here, and then the, adding the contents of text box one to the right-hand side of it, rather than the reverse that is typically true. So that's what the difference is between there and there. And then once again, preventing anyone from having multiple negative signs in our calculations. All right, so let's get on to what we're doing today. So today we're going to tackle these guys over here. So we've got these four buttons. So first off, we've got uh, multiply, divide, add, and subtract. Uh, and these, the code for these buttons are each going to be almost e exactly identical. There's only one small little difference between them. So if we figure out one of them, we're going to get all of them all, all at once. We'll just have to copy and paste some code. So let's go ahead and jump into here, and we're going to take a look at it. Now, I've already put down some scaffolding, so you can kind of see what's going on. If you're following along with uh, with my written t t tutorial, um, uh, you'll you'll uh, be able to recognize all these stages in the uh, in the in the description, which you can see right here. Uh, so in this one, we're going to start off with um, uh, we're going to start off by storing uh, some information. We're going to be changing the label. Uh, are doing a little bit of erasing of the text box in order to make, prepare for the next round of uh, the next uh, the next uh, number to be input into our calculator, uh, and then we're going to be messing around with some buttons, and then we're going to be dealing with uh, with the operations variable to uh, to uh, basically set uh, set that up for our um, uh, our equal sign that's going to come into play later on, which is going to calculate out our final result. But don't worry if you didn't catch all that in that one go. Uh, I'm going to be coming back through it. We're going to be walking through this step by step. So, speaking of steps, let's start off with number one. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to store the contents of uh, uh, of the text box. So, whatever's in our on our uh, calculator screen right at the moment, we're going to save that into our first input variable using an assignment operation. So, let's jump over and see what that take, that looks like. So, here is our example calculation. So just so you're kind of aware as to where we stand. So by the time this button gets hit, someone has already typed in a value. My little experimental value is five, uh, five times four equals 20. In this case, the, the user is gonna have typed in the, the digit five and then hit the multiply sign. Uh, and we are basically gonna figure out what should happen when that occurs. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna save that five um, uh, and the reason we're going to do that is because we want to clear the text box for the next um, uh, the next value that's, that we're going to be entering into the calculator, namely the 4, when it, when it finally comes. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this into the first of the variables that we created in, earlier on in the program, which you can see right up here. Uh, so this is these are our variables right here. We're in, in, in particular, we're going to be using the first uh, variable. So we're at dim first as double. Um, we're now going to start making use of this storage space that we created. I'm going to scroll down here. 
and we're going to start off by uh, assigning the any information that's inside the text box uh, text box one right now into uh, that variable. So I'm going to write out first off the variable's name. So this is the destination that that all that information is going to get saved to, and then the information that I'm saving. So I'm going to say text text box one text box one dot text, and there we go. So that's going to save whatever happens to be on the screen right at this moment is getting pushed into the uh, first of our storage areas uh, for uh, for retention. Uh, this will later get used by the equals sign to actually carry out whatever math operations you're going to do. All right, step two. Now we're going to go ahead and change the label text. So the label is found right here. And it's as you can see, it says first value right now. We're going to tell it to now switch to saying second value. And we do that by, um, oh, I should say, um, as you can see down here, this is these are the properties of the label. So any if we want to access any of these properties, we just say give the label's name. In our case, our this label, you know, it says first value right now is actually called label one. Uh, so if I want to change uh, the text in it, I'm going to say label one dot text equals, and then I'm going to give the value whatever uh, the value of whatever I want to save. Um, in this case, it's going to be a string of characters that say second value. So jumping back over here, I'm going to say uh, label one dot text equals uh, to second value. And I did that inside of quotes because uh, uh, anything that usually uh, anything that take carries text typically carries what we call a string, which is a string of characters. Uh, so this is why I've written those in double quotes. And usually anytime you're dealing with text, you're going to be seeing, you're going to be dealing with double quotes as well. All right. Next up, we're going to erase the contents of the text box. We just up here, we've saved everything that was on screen. Now we want the screen empty so we can start entering in new values. And the way you clear, uh, clear the text box of any information it might have carried before, uh, is simply to save it, save nothing into it. So I'm going to write te text box one dot text, and I'm going to say it's going now going to be equal to an empty string of characters. So just like the second value there, I'm just going to I'm just going to say use two double quotes to delineate my string, and I'm just not going to put anything in between them. That's it. That's going to erase whatever's in there. So now it's going to be a blank screen. Next up, we're going to start playing around with some buttons and making sure that they can't they, that they can be used once more. So now we're basically prepping for the next number that's going to get entered. And if you remember from earlier up in from when we set up, set up the number buttons in our design, uh, these two buttons can only be used once. So if you run eight times eight, sorry, 8.5, uh, this button was going to gray itself out as soon as that button was pressed. We now want that button to be active again, so that you, so that you can have you know 8.5 plus 4.2. We want that number of it. We want that to be able to say 4.2. So we need to turn this button back on. The way we're going to do that is by sending an instruction to the button. Pardon me, I should have just double checked what the button was called. So I'm looking to change button 11, and the same story is true of the negative button. So button 10. So 10 and 11 need to get turned on. And the way I do is just like with text, I'm going to say. Uh, button 10, but instead of saying text this time, I'm going to say enable. And now, as you can see on the little tooltip here, and uh, the enabled, in, uh, the enabled uh, property is uh, a flag that tells the computer whether that button is turned on or off. Since it's only ever on or off, it's either uh, they what they've done is they've used a boolean uh, to say either true or false. A boolean can only have either a true or false value. So if we say true, it's going to, the button's going to be turned on. If we say false, it's going to be turned off. In this case, we want true. So I'm going to click there. There's button 10 done. And now I'm going to just quickly do the same for button uh, 11. Okay. So next up, we want to enable the equals button. And so up until now, we've said your, button, your equals button is not available because we don't have all the information we need to start running it. We don't want to have someone to write five times and then leave nothing in here and just hit equals. Um, that's going to cause us problems. Or just going, yeah, no, five times equals five plus equals, things like that. 
our calculator is just not designed to accommodate that kind of uh, that kind of information. So we're going to basically turn on that button now. Once again, we're just going to find out what it's called. In this case, it's button 13. Button 13 dot enable equals true. Okay. Now we're going to do. Now we're going to actually turn off some buttons. So we're going to go the other way. In this case, we're going to turn off our, all of our operations buttons. So we're going to basically make all these ones not available after one of these ones gets pressed. So you can't have five times minus eight because we don't know. We basically don't want to go into how that might work. Um, so we're just going to limit it to one operation per um, uh, per calculation in this, in this particular run, in this particular calculator. So what we're going to do is we're going to send an order to button 18, 17, 16, and 50 by the looks of it. So uh, and turn those ones off. So we're going to say button 15 dot enable. This time we're going to say false instead of true. Then we're turning the buttons off. Dot enable equals true. false. 17 dot enable equals false and button 18 dot enable equals false. All right, so now we've got one last thing we need to do, and that is setting the operations variable. Now, when our calculation actually runs, um, we're, we're going to have uh, or if we're doing, sorry, let's go back to our example. We've got 5 times 4 equals 20. So uh, our user has put, her, put in their 5. They hit the times button. Uh, and now they're going, and now our uh, calculator is ready to accept the 4, uh, the 4 value when, it, when that finally comes, which will come right after this button it works. Um, uh, but what, what our, what our uh, equals button needs to know is what kind of calculation we're doing. Uh, that button doesn't have, right now, doesn't have any way of telling whether we are adding, multiplying, dividing, subtracting, anything. And the way it's going to be able to, but what we're going to do is we're going to pass a message to it saying, okay, this is what kind of math operation we're going to be doing, and we're going to use the operations variable to do it. So into the operations variable, which is, once again, right up here, we're going to store a number, just a very simple number. Uh, it's going to have either one, two, three, or four. And if we're going to be, if our equals button is supposed to multiply some numbers together, it's going to have the number one stored inside of it. If it's going to be dividing, it's going to have two. If it's going to be adding, it's going to have three. And if it's subtracting, it's going to have four. So we're going to scroll back down here. So what we're going to write is operation and simply say equals. So once again, I'm just going to be assigning a number here. So uh, in this case, sorry, this is an assignment operation. So storage location always goes on the left. We say equals to something, and then we say whatever it might be over here that it's going to be equals to. In this case, we're just going to say equals 1. Okay, and there we have it. So this is all the code you need for the multiply button. Uh, and what you're going to need to do is uh, uh, copy and paste this to all of the other uh, operations buttons. So divide, uh, add, and subtract. Uh, but the only thing you're going to have to change is this guy right here. So when you do, when you do your division button, it's going to be 2. When you add, it's going to be 3, and when you uh, subtract, it's going to be 4. And that's all there is to this one. So anyway, I'm going to jump back in. Uh, I'm going to leave the sorry, leave this tutorial here, and I'm going to jump back in when we tackle the clear button in the, uh, in the next tutorial. All right, thanks very much, and have a good day.